Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob. Let's try to finish up this Zechariah chapter 13. And, uh, yep, Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. So let's hit Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1. In that day, in that day, there shall be a fountain, a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. And I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Now, I think this is talking about the false prophets. So, what about a fountain? Let's take a look. So, what are these fountains of waters? Well, a shadow of it was mentioned in John chapter 7. In verse 36, um, Jesus is getting ready to be taken and crucified to die for our sins. So, in John 7, verse 36, um, you know, they were uh, arguing with Christ, and he was telling the unbelieving you-know-whos that um, they couldn't follow him. So, in John 7, verse 36, he says, They say, What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me, and where I am, thither ye cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All right, so in John chapter 4, we read about, uh, well, you know, the woman at the well, right? So let's take a look. Uh, John chapter 4, verse 7. How about verse 6? Now Jacob's well was there. Now Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Then cometh a woman of Samaria, you know, the capital of northern Israel. The king, uh, capital of Judah was Jerusalem. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Ah, the Samaritan woman says that her father was Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. She was an Israelite, people. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, 
who gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto, who, said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now, remember, in Zechariah, um, in verse 1, it says, In that day there shall be a fountain, a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness so in revelation 7 17 for the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of water living fountains of water and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes okay in revelation 22 verse 1 and he showed me a pure river of water of life as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, ah, book of Genesis, right? Which bare twelve manners of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the trees, the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And um, there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. All right, let's skip down to verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root, the root and the offspring of David. Now remember in Zechariah 1, it said that uh, the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, that's where the fountain was for, right? So, I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, come and let him that heareth come, say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. All right, back to Zechariah 13. You know, in verse 2, um, and he's at the, uh, the last sentence, it says, And I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. Yeah, because God's going to destroy them, right? Verse 3. Now, we're going back a little bit in time. This is not. This is probably the end times, but the events leading up to the coming of Christ, uh, the events prior to his coming. You know, and it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, ah, in Joel chapter two. Uh, verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams that'll be me your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit okay so Let's see. So that's leading up to things. All right, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 32. Jesus speaking here. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. 
For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes, or enemies, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. That plays right into what we're getting ready to read in Zechariah. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth Luthus loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink Unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. All right, Zechariah 13 and verse 3. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. In other words, they're going to they're thrust him through with a sword. They're going to kill him. A prophet of the Lord, and they're going to kill him. Because, you know, a prophet's job was not an easy thing. I mean, you know, when the people were wicked, it was easy being a prophet when everybody was righteous. You know, because they were pronouncing blessings. But uh, being a prophet, when everybody was evil, they didn't have a very long lifespan. According to tradition and legend, the prophet Isaiah was put inside of a log, a hollowed out log, and they cut him in two with a saw. I don't know if that's true, but uh, wouldn't surprise me. You know, 10 of the uh, Twelve apostles died for their faith. Judas hung himself. John, on the Isle of Patmos that wrote the book, wrote the book of Revelation, uh, they tried to kill him. According to legend and tradition, they couldn't kill him. That's why they um, quarantined him in the Isle of Patmos. They wanted to keep him out of you know away from everybody. And of course, Judas hung himself, but uh, he doesn't count. Jesus says, have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a, a devil? Oh, yeah. You know, uh, let's see. Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Hmm. God sent the prophets to Jerusalem. And people will try to tell you, you know, about uh, Rome, it's mystery, Babylon, you know, and it talks about the two witnesses. God's not sending his two witnesses to Rome, the Vatican. He's going to send them to Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children, children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Um... When people are evil, prophets don't have a very long lifespan. How about John 16 and uh, John chapter 16? Let's take a look. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Oh, yeah. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. Ah, and these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father 
nor me. All right, so let's go back to Zechariah. I guess we'll read verse 3 again. And it shall come to pass when that when any shall yet prophesy, that his father and his mother that begat him shall say unto him, Thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. Now remember, uh, Jeremiah, they didn't, you know, uh, they didn't like Jeremiah. He was telling them, oh, you guys are going into captivity. The Babylonians are going to carry you away. They didn't want to hear that. Oh, he's conspiring against the king of Israel, uh, you know, Judah. And uh, they threw him in prison. You know, they didn't want to hear that stuff. Verse 4. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision. When he hath prophesied, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. But he shall say, I am no prophet, I am an husbandman. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. See, there people are going to be called to be prophets, and they're not even going to want to do this. And totally, I totally get it. Really, I do. Verse 6, And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. All right, turn the Bible to John chapter 20. Uh, Jesus' crucifixion was done. Uh, he's uh, raised from the dead. John 20, verse 19. Then the, self, uh, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Oh, yeah. Remember, uh, he had nails put into his hands, and there was a spear in his side. And believe it or not, there's a, they got a thing, I think it's called the swoon theory, where they say that Jesus really didn't die, but, uh, you know, they beat him up and pierced his hands and put a spear in his side, but he really didn't die. And then after the third day, he uh, awoke and you know, claimed that he would died and came back to life and blah, blah, blah. But I'm telling you what, when a Roman soldier who has probably seen combat many, many times sticks a sword, I mean, a, a spear into your side, uh, he's going to know whether you're dead or not. Okay? I mean, if they notice, they take you down from the cross and you're still breathing, uh, trust me, a soldier... A Roman soldier seeing combat knows when somebody's alive and when somebody's dead. But uh, they call that the swoon theory. They'll do anything to try to try to ruin people's faith in the scriptures. I say, let them go to hell. And uh, God's got a place for them. Yeah. All right, so. Verse John 20, 20. 2020. You got 2020 vision? John 2020. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Who's Soever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands 
the print of the nails. Remember in Zechariah 13, they said, what are these? You know, and he says, oh, these are, you know, I, uh, I was wounded in the house of my friends. He says, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my uh, finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and thomas answered and said unto him my lord and my god and the jehovah's witnesses will tell you that he's uh, using the lord's name here in vain he's just saying oh my lord and my god oh my god oh uh, see jesus they'll tell you uh is just the archangel michael no jesus in 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, God was manifest in the flesh. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Verse 29, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name, Yeshua HaMashiach. No. That you might have life through his name. You know, there's a reason why they don't want the name of Jesus. There's a reason for that. Devils tremble at the name of Jesus. I bet you devils laugh at the name of Yeshua. All right, back to verse 6, Zechariah 13. And one shall say unto him, what, what are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. See, there were, Christ had friends in his house, the, you know, the temple, the house, house of the Lord. But uh, he also had the enemies. And the enemies did that, right? Verse 7. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Ooh. And against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Now remember, in John 10, 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now, where do we read about smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered? Well, Mark 14, 27. Uh, they're in the garden. Jesus is there with his disciples. Judas is coming with his disciples, the temple guard. They're going to arrest Jesus before they take him to Ananias and Caiaphas and try him for heresy and blasphemy. So what did Jesus say? And Jesus saith unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. That's right, when they arrested Jesus and took him away to, to have him crucified uh, with Pilate, this is what he says. Matthew 26, 31. Then saith Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Hmm. All right, let's go to Zechariah 13 and verse 8. And it, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. 
but the third shall be left therein. Uh, let me take a look. I think this ties in with Revelation, but I'm going to have to check. Yeah, it's in the in Revelation. It talks about a, a well. Let's take a look. Revelation 9:15. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day, and a month and a year, for to slay the third part of men. Revelation 9:18. By these three were the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. So Zechariah talks about two-thirds being killed and a third part being left so it doesn't it doesn't really tie in so i'm not sure where this ties in at i'll be honest with you all right verse nine and i will bring the third part through the fire oh boy i did a if memory serves me correctly i did a series on fire uh, fire for unbelievers is not good, but for the believing people, it's good. All right, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is lain, that is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, in other words, when it, when, when it, it gets burned up, if there's anything left, well, you know, that's, the, the bad things are going to be burned up, but the good things are going to be left. All right, verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So, 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. All right, in Matthew 3.11, John speaking, John the Baptist. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire all right in hebrews 1 7 and of the angels he saith who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire Hebrews 12, 29, for our God is a consuming fire. Hmm. Let's take a look. Uh, let's go to, you know, we were reading in Zechariah about the uh, silver, right? Let's go to Malachi. It's the last book in the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 3. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And that was John the Baptist. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? Oh yeah, who's going to be able to stand on the day of Christ's coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire. Now, when you mine metals out of the ground, they are, nothing's pure. So what you have to do is a refinery, uh, they melt everything, and then the metals have different uh, densities, in other words, different weights, 
For example, gold is heavier than most things. So the gold will be, on, when you melt it, the gold's going to be on the bottom of the bowl and all the other stuff that's not gold will be on top. So you scrape off the stuff off the top and the gold is what's left at the bottom. Now I'm not sure about silver, but uh, what you do is you melt the stuff to separate it. And that's, you know, that's what a refiner's fire is. So what is God? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. See, God wants to purify us just like silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you in judgment and I will be a swift witness against the saucers and against the adulterers and against false wares and against those that oppress the hiring and his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from mine ordinances, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. Believe that, people. When we return unto him, he's going to return unto us. But uh, only a remnant's going to probably return to him. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. By ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now where herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, What have we spoken so much against thee? Ye have said, It is vain. It's worthless, right? It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinances, that we have walked mournfully the, before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are set up, yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. It sounds like today, doesn't it? Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before them, for them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name. A book of remembrance, the book of life, right? The Lamb's book of life. 17. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I spare them, as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between them that serveth God and him that serveth him not. All right, let's go to Zechariah 9. And I will, uh, nine, uh, verse 13, chapter 13, Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined. Yeah, God wants to separate the good stuff from the bad stuff in, in us. And I will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. You know, somebody once asked a, a person that refined, refined silver, how did he know when the silver was pure and ready? And he says it's simple. 
you would um, you would melt the silver after you've pur and you've pur purified it a num number of times, and you look into it when it, it's melted, right? And it's like a bowl of water, but it's silver colored, right? You look down into it, and when you can see your reflection in the silver, like a mirror, the refiner knew that it was done. And doesn't that what God wants us? That he wants us to be refined as silver so that when he looks at us, he can see his reflection in our lives. Isn't that what the Lord wants? All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and the only begotten Son of God, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name, amen. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Stay close to Jesus, people. Things are going to probably get a lot rougher. This is March 19 of the year 2020. All this talk about Corona. And no, we're not talking about the beer. Take care, people. Take care.